to find the bicep tendon, you're going to place your left hand over the front, the anterior portion of the glenohumeral joint. You're going to take your other hand and passively, internally, externally rotate the humerus, and you can feel the bicep tendon, your finger rolling over the bicep tendon as as it internally and externally rotates. Once you've found it, you can palpate through the groove, looking for tenderness. This is Jurgensen's test for bicepital tendonitis. You have the patient sit up nice and tall, relax their shoulder down, flex the elbow at 90 degrees, stabilize the elbow with your left hand, and I'll have the patient pronate, start in pronation, and then you're gonna resist external rotation and supination. So relax around for a second. So this is the motion we're going to be doing, and you're just resisting that. So when you're ready, go. And a positive uh, test will be pain in the bicepital groove, and a test for bicepital tendonitis. Next test is a speeds test, where you have the patient forward flex the arm to 90 degrees. You have them hold it there, apply pressure over the bicep. Down pressure, and you have them resist it and hold it in that position. And positive sign would be either weakness or pain within the bicep groove. Now first, if you just palpate the AC joint, it'll feel tender. You're going to have the person fully support of the person at the elbow, bring them up to 90 degrees of shoulder flexion. Keep your other hand on the AC joint itself and then passively, horizontally adduct the arm and they'll feel a positive sign is pain over the AC joint itself with the joint being compressed. Uh, the patient is actively going to reach back and touch as far as they can down the middle of their spine and you're going to mark these looking from side to side. You're going to reach across their shoulder as far as they can across onto their scapula, and then they're going to reach back around and high as they can up on their vertebral column and their spine. And you're marking the level at which they can come up, come down, and across. And you're comparing that from side to side. Step nice and tall. Actually, rotate out as far as they can while stabilizing the elbow. You're going to have them hold their hand right there. And don't let me push you down. That's going to test your infraspinatus. Sit up nice and tall. You're going to bring the patient to 45 degrees right here, not forward, not abducted, right in the middle, 45 degrees. Elbows straight, thumbs down, and you're going to apply a downward force and you're going to have the patient try to keep their arms right at this position. So, ready? Okay. Good. A positive test would be either the inability to keep the arms up. Uh, a difference from side to side or pain in the rotator cuff. The patient is going to put their hand, dorsum of the hand on their lumbar spine, and they're going to try to lift off of their back. And once they, if they're able to do that, you're going to apply some pressure to that if they're able to keep it off their back. And a positive test would be inability to lift off their back or pain while resisting. Patient just relax their arms, sit up nice and tall. Okay. You're going to passively abduct their arms and hold them at 90 degrees, and you're going to have the patient, you're going to let go, and you're going to have the patient slowly bring them down to their side. A positive test would be if a person couldn't bring it down slowly and it would just drop down. Near sign. We are standing laterally to the patient, have them fully relax their arm, you fully support it right under the elbow, stabilize the back of their shoulder with your other hand, and passively forward flex their arm up to the end range, and you really want to get a full flexion out of it. A positive test would be uh, a pinching pain at the top of the end, uh, end of range of motion, uh, where you're compressing uh, the contents in the subacromial space. The patient sit up nice and tall. Again, stabilize the shoulder with your other hand. Forward flex 
the arms 90 degrees and 9 degrees of elbow flexion where it's directly in front of them and then passively internally rotate you can start up here where it's non-painful and then come down slowly and you can feel a positive sign would be pain in that subacromial space and it's going to be a pinching pain now wince glenohumeral instability uh, if the patient is sitting if you're looking at inferior instability you can perform a sulcus sign where the patient sits up nice and tall relaxes their arm you can stabilize the top of their shoulder you want to grab them above the elbow so right around the bicep and then distract their arm down <laughs> if there isn't very instability the humeral head drops down and you'll be able to see a prominent chromium right here if the humeral head uh, is has any laxity or instability in your um, inferior capsule patient is relaxed arm is uh, shoulder is abducted to 90 degrees in neutral position right now and slowly externally rotate the arm back and if there is anterior instability the patient will not want you to go any further where they feel the instability and you can come back and do it again make sure it happens around the same spot and then uh, that's a positive sign for anterior instability. And the next thing is job relocation test, where you have them in that position where they, they're starting to feel unstable. You take your other hand and uh, give firm pressure to the anterior portion of the glenohumeral joint, and that should relieve the apprehension that they could probably go a little bit further. And then if you release that, they'll get that apprehension right back again. Stabilize the scapula and clavicle with your left hand so you, there is no anterior posterior translation of that. Take your right hand, locate the humeral head, load it up into the glenoid and then give anterior and posterior translation. If there is instability you'll feel laxity and translation of the glenoid, uh, the humeral head over the glenoid rim and also maybe pain associated with that. There's a lot of variation in this test, but this is how I perform it. Basically take a uh, person at the elbow with the elbow at 90 degree flexion where you have good control of the elbow. Stabilize uh, the shoulder joint with the other hand and you're going to give axial load to the humerus up into the glenoid and then you're going to move it around pretty much circumduct it around to all the edges of the labrum feeling for any clunks or painful spots around there and the patient relaxes their arms sits up nice and tall puts their thumb directly up in the air okay the arm is uh, forward flexed to 90 degrees and then horizontally abducted right in front of their face. And the patient is going to give an upward force and you're going to resist forward flexion. And then you turn the thumb down and they're going to bring the arm up and you're going to resist that flexion as well. Positive test is pain or clunking in the shoulder. The only collateral ligament is found by palpating the medial aspects of the elbow just distal to the medial epicondyle. So to test this, this ligament laxity you want to place a good support with your left hand on the elbow joint itself and then use a finger to feel for that joint. And you're going to have the person fully supinated you know, first do this test in full extension, elbow extension. And you're going to apply a valgus force to the hand while stabilizing the elbow. So you should feel a nice, sharp end feel. 
and then you, you know, do it again at 20 to 30 degrees. You feel a nice sharp end feel of that ligament. A positive test would either be pain underneath your finger on the, uh, on the collateral ligament or laxity compared from side to side. And you have to test the other collateral, which is the, the lateral collateral or radial collateral ligament, where you're doing the same exact test, but you're doing it the opposite direction. You're applying a varus force with your bottom hand and you're stabilizing the elbow. Again, at, at zero degrees. Nice sharp end feel, and then 20, 30 degrees. Nice sharp end feel. Again, you're looking for the same laxity side to side or pain at the ligament. Relax the hand, stabilize the wrist with your other hand. Feel for the ulnar groove the elbow, and just lightly tap over the ulnar nerve and ask them what they feel. And if there is ulnar nerve compression or entrapment, they may feel uh, numbness or tingling or radiating a feeling down their medial forearm into their last two digits. Have the patient at 90 degrees of elbow flexion. You're going to place your finger over the medial epicondyle. And you're going to have the person fully supinated. You're going to have them flex and all and deviate uh, their wrist. And you're going to have them hold it there while you perform a brake test. Okay, hold it there while I push down. A positive test would then be the inability to hold it and you'd be able to break them or pain underneath your finger at the medial uh, epicondyle. And just the opposite of that is for lateral epicondylitis. So you're gonna have you're gonna have the person sit in the same position, elbow flex 90 degrees. You're gonna have them fully pronate, extend their wrist and on and on their deviate. And then you're going to have them resist at this position, try to perform a brake test. Okay, hold it right there. Try to pull it down. Same thing, pain would be under your finger at the lateral epicondyle or inability to hold the hand up. Pinch test is performed for uh, anterior interosseous nerve syndrome. So you're looking at uh, the median nerve coming through the anterior cubital fossa. And if there is entrapment or compression in that, uh, in that region, uh, your median nerve is going to be affected. So you have the patient pinch index and thumb together at the tips. And they should be able to get the tips together. If they can only perform it by touching the pads together, that is a positive test. Which tells you median nerve pathology. Uh, the first test we're going to do is the Tunnel test and you're going to stabilize the wrist with your hand and have the patient fully relax and the other hand you're just going to tap over the volar aspect of the wrist and you ask them what they feel. The positive tests would be pain, numbness or tingling shooting down into the hand, to the, the lateral aspect of the hand. You can also perform this for your ulnar nerve as well by just tapping over the medial portion of the wrist where the ulnar nerve comes in and ask them what they feel as well. And they should have either numbness or tingling down in the last two digits. The Fromet sign is for ulnar nerve weakness. And you're gonna have the patient grasp a piece of paper between their index finger and the inner portion of their thumb. Okay, so it's not directly on. So you're going to have the thumb adduct. This is testing ulnar nerve, so uh, ulnar nerve is responsible for thumb adduction. And you try to pull the piece of paper away. A positive test would be either they cannot hold the paper, they rotate their thumb around, so it is more thumb flexion, or the thumb starts to bend. Uh, Finkelstein's test. This is for Dick Ravain's tenosynovitis uh, of uh, the extensor pollicis tendon. You have the patient put their thumb in their hand, wrap their fingers around, and then actively ulnar deviate their wrist. 
a positive test would be pain across the tendon or inability to get as far as they can on the other side. So side to side comparison is important on this one because many people will have pain with this motion at their end range. It is also for carpal tunnel, it's called Phelan's test and the patient abducts their arms up to about 90 degrees, puts the dorsal aspect of their wrist together and holds them tight there for a minute. And positive sign would be pain, numbness, or tingling into the hands at any point in time within the minute. The axial compression test uh, can be done on any long bone. Um, it can either test for uh, arthritis at a joint or fracture. So whichever bone you want, we're going to use her proximal phalanx of her index finger to test. And we're going to stabilize her second metacarpal. And we're going to perform, we're going to grab the proximal phalanx, apply an axial load. Once you have contact with the bone at the joint, you're then going to rotate, circumduct the bone around, looking for pain, crepitus at the joint. Pain with an initial load in the joint can signal a fracture somewhere in that long bone.